In this video, you are going to be learning how to use long division to solve division questions that have big numbers. And when you're doing long division, I want you to think about my friend. This is my friend. It's the division monster. Alright, get serious. This division monster is, is really helpful because uh, he explains the steps in long division. So if you look over here in the top right corner, you see the steps in long division. You divide, then you multiply, you subtract, then you bring down, and then you go back to the start and you repeat over and over again until you get your final answer. And I'm going to explain how that works in this video. Let's say you have a question like this, 48 divided by 4. Well, in long division, we use this little box shape, and we put our divisor, no, sorry, that's our dividend. We put our dividend in the box, and we put our divisor in front of it. That's how we set it up. Now, if you look at our division monster, the first step is to divide. So we take our first number here, 4, and we divide 4 into 4. What's 4 divided by 4? Another way to think of that is how many times can this 4 go into this 4 without going over? So if we count by 4's, 4, 8, 12, we know that 4 divided by 4 is 1. So I put a 1 at the top there. The second step is to multiply. What is 1 this one that I just wrote down, times 4. That's our divisor. Well, the answer is 4. Then, the next step from our division monster is to subtract. 4 minus 4 is 0. And the last step from the division monster is bring down, which means I bring down the next number. And now I have 8. So now I'm dealing with... How many times can this 4 go into 8? Or another way to think of that is 8 divided by 4. Well, the answer is 2. So I put a 2 above where I'm working. I'm working with the 8. That's where I write my 2. You can see that I've started this process again here with the steps. So I divided 8 by 4, and I had 2. Now I multiply. 2 times 4 is 8. And then the next step is to subtract. 8 minus 8 is 0. And then the next step is to bring down. But I have no more numbers to bring down, which means I'm done. And my answer is 12. You can see it up here, 12. That means 48 divided by 4 equals 12. Here's another example. 56 divided by 4. So again, I'm going to write it like this. I put my dividend in here, and my divisor goes in front of the box. Okay, now I'm ready to begin. So looking at my division monster, the first step is to divide. So I'm going to divide 5 by 4. So I'm asking myself, how many times can 4 go into 5. If I'm counting by 4s without going over 5, well, let's count by 4s. 4, 8, oh, I have to stop. I'm already over 5. So that means 4 can only go into 5 one time. So I put the 1 up top above the 5. And then I multiply. 1 times my divisor 4 is 4. And then the next step is to subtract and then bring down. So I bring down my next number. Now I'm back to the top of my process, my steps to long division, but this time I'm working with the number 16. So let's divide. 16 divided by 4. Another way to ask this is how many times does 4 go into 16? Well, if I know my multiplication table, 4 times 4 is 16. So 16 divided by 4 is 4. 
I put a 4 above the 6 because I'm working with that number. Then the next step is to multiply. So I multiply this 4 times my divisor. 4 times 4 is 16. And then I subtract that. And finally I bring down, but I have no more numbers to bring down, so then I'm done. And there's my answer. So 56 divided by 4 equals 14. Here's another question we can try. 37 divided by 3. Alright, now that I have it set up, let's start by dividing. So I look at this first number in my dividend. And 3 divided by 3 is 1. So I put a 1 up top. And then I multiply. I multiply the number I have up top, 1, times my divisor, which is 3. And 1 times 3 is 3. And I put it there. Then I subtract. 3 minus 3 is 0. And then, according to my monster, I bring down. So I bring down the next number. And look how I draw the arrows. That way I always know what number I'm working with. Now I go back to the top of these steps, and I begin again. Now I have 7 divided by 3. How many times can 3 go into 7 without going over? Let's count by 3's. 3, 6, 9. Oh, I'm over 7, so I can't go to 9, so I have to stop at 6, which means 3 can go into 7 2 times. And then I multiply. 2 times 3 is 6. And then I subtract that. 7 minus 6 is 1. And then I would bring down, but I have no more numbers to bring down. So this number down here, this 1, becomes what's called a remainder. And I write it like this, capital R, 1. So the answer, 37 divided by 3, the answer is 12 remainder 1. All right, time for a little harder question. Three hundred forty six divided by eight. All right, so if I start with my three, how many times can eight go into three? Well, eight cannot go into three even once, it can't go at all because if you count by eights, the first time you say eight, you're already over the number three. So then what I can do is look at the first two digits. Let's look at 34. How many times can 8 go into 34? I'm going to use the multiplication chart to help me with this. So if I find the 8 right here, and I go along, when do I get to 34 or close to? Well, 40 is too high, but 32 is really close. So if I look up from 32, I see it's 4 times. So 8 can go into 34 4 times. So I put my 4 up here. And then the next step after dividing is multiplying. 4 times 8 is 32. And then I'm going to subtract that. And then I bring down the next number. All right, I just had to get rid of that multiplication chart for the next part. Now, I have 26 divided by 8. How many times can 8 go into 26 without going over? Well, if I remember my multiplication chart, it's 3 times. And 8 times 3 is 24. So I subtract that and I have 2. Now I bring down my next number, but there's no number to bring down, so that means the 2 becomes my remainder. So the answer to 346 divided by 8 is 43 remainder 2. Let's do another question. 538 divided by 7. Alright, well I start by dividing. So 5 into 7. Well 5 
cannot divide by 7 because 7 can't go into 5. So what I'm going to do is look at the first two numbers here. I have 53. 7 can go into 53 how many times? Well, if I pull up my multiplication chart and I find 7, I can see that 7, if I go along there, when do I get close to 53 without going over? Right there at 49. So looking up, the answer is 7. So 7 can go into 53 7 times. The next step for my monster is to multiply. So I multiply 7 times 7 and I get 49. Then I subtract that. And then I bring down the next number. And now I'm dealing with 48. How many times can 7 go into 48? Well, if I look right here, I know that 7 could go into 49 7 times. So I bet it can go into 48 6 times. So I put a 6 up here. And then I multiply 6 times 7 is 42 and I subtract that and then I bring down my next number but there's no number to bring down so the 6 becomes my remainder now it's very 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 important is if your remainder is bigger than your divisor you've made a mistake somewhere the remainder is always 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 smaller than the divisor always okay that's very very important to remember so when you're doing long division remember the long division monster and the steps and guess what if you haven't noticed it his steps are in his face he has dividing eyes that's the first step and he has a multiplication nose, that's the second step. And a subtraction mouth, that's the third step. And a bring down goatee, facial hair, wicked looking beard or something. All right, and then after that, you always go back to the top and start again. So keeping in mind the division monster, you should remember the steps for long division. Good luck and have fun.